Determining grain size is extremely important in material science. Nowadays, many instruments are digital, and the measurement of grain size is trivial. However, in many instances, we're looking at images that were taken before this era and are simply photomicrographs from optical microscopes, such as the one shown here. For this image, this question asks us to employ the intercept technique to determine the mean intercept length, and therefore the grain size, for the steel specimen whose microstructure is shown. Note, the image in the book at the size where it's printed in the book is at a magnification of 90x. The image that you see here on my computer screen is larger than 90x. We'll talk about how we deal with that in just a moment. As we employ the line intercept technique, we are told to use at least seven straight line segments. And for part B, once we know the mean intercept length, we are asked to determine the ASTM grain size number for this material. So there's a number of steps to do here. The first step would be draw seven lines of equal length randomly across your sample. Here we see that there are seven lines now drawn on the sample. And again, if you're using the image at the exact size that it's printed in the book, then the length of each of these lines, if you were to measure the length of each one of these lines, it would be 60 millimeters. As it's drawn on my computer screen, it's actually larger. When I measure it, I'm getting 105 millimeters. We'll talk about what to do with this discrepancy in a moment. The second step is to identify how many times each line intersects a new grain. So for example, take line one. We start counting the times that these things intersect grains. When you add them up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we see that it has seven different intersections. Let's do line number two. Again, we're going to add these up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. You'd add these up for all seven different lines. Once you've done so, we reach our third step, which is to add up the total number of intersections from all of these lines. Doing so, you compile a table like this. Here's our seven different lines. Here's how many intersections for each one. You add these up, and we find that there's a total of 53 intersections. Now we're ready to go to our fourth and final step, which is divide the total length by the total number of intersections, right? So L bar, that's our mean intercept length, equals L sub T, that's the total length of lines. Again, there was seven lines times 60 millimeters apiece. That's gonna give us 420 millimeters, divided by P, the number of intersections, that's 53 intersections, multiplied by m, the magnification, which if you've done this in the book, it was 90x. Taking this together, we find that the average or the mean intercept length is 0 0.088 millimeters. Now, we do need to modify this if you're using an image like I've been using, which is slightly larger or smaller than when it was originally presented at some arbitrary magnification. So for us, we no longer have the image at the same size that it was printed in the book. In the book, it was at 90x, which meant our total line length was 420 millimeters. But with me projecting on my computer screen, I've actually enlarged it a little bit, and therefore I've increased the magnification. That's not a problem. We can recalculate our magnification very easily. The book has an expression that shows that m, the magnification, equals the length of the scale bar that you measure. And this needs to be divided by the number next to the scale bar or in other words, the supposed length so for us, when I actually measure this with a ruler on my computer screen, I find that that distance there is 31 millimeters. Well, 31 millimeters divided by what it should be, 200 microns. Let's put millimeters in micrometers. 31,000 micrometers divided by 200 micrometers means that we are now at an effective magnification that's larger. We're at 155x magnification.
instead of 90x because I've blown it up a little bit on my computer. Well, that's not a problem. Our line length was also longer because it's blown up on my computer. Instead of being 60 millimeters, now it's 7 times 105 millimeters. We've increased our magnification, but when we plug everything in together, we get the same answer essentially as we did before. Now we can move on to part B. Part B says calculate the ASTM G number. Simply, we plug it into the expression given in the chapter. G, the ASTM G number, equals negative 6.6457 times log of the mean intercept length. Note, this is log base 10, right? Minus 3.298. When we go ahead and plug that in, negative 6.6457 log of 0 0.088 minus 3.298. Note, this needs to be in millimeters. We solved it previously in millimeters, so we're fine. Had we solved it in microns or something, we would need to convert it to millimeters. Taking this together, we find that the ASTM G number for this material is 3.72.